Welcome back to the garage, guys. So, after releasing the track video, I got some huge news to announce. Thanks to the Devin 918 who commented on the video, he pointed something out major about the data log. Our 1082 pass we did, yeah, it never saw second gear. I know, right? Here's what happened. So here's the data log <laughs> from that last pass there, right? Okay. Hi. This is, the screen line is the gear we're in. As you can see here, it's gear one. Okay, Hi. right here. This is where it shifts into gear two. Okay. Uh, and I put my zero mark, so we're zero on the timeline right here for where it started in gear two. Now the RPM is 6,800. And if we go to the end of it, we are, so if you just aim there and look right here, 0.731 of a second. And if we go to the end of it, we are, it's it. But if you look at the RPM, the RPM never dropped through that. So we started at 6,800 and we wound up at 7,700. And then if you go a little bit further forward, we're at 7,400, the RPM is dropping now and it's in third gear. So we actually never got to see second gear in that pass or any of my passes. It skipped second gear every time. So basically, the car could have made a much better pass if that didn't happen. Crazy. But that discovery got me thinking. And I decided to dig deeper into this whole thing. Why did it skip second gear? Was it the transmission? What was it? So I reached out to the World Wide Web, and guess what I found out? This is actually common with a Holly and high horsepower applications. Go figure. But here's the kicker. It's fixable. And here's how. It just takes a little testing and tuning to get it all figured out. So what's next? We got a few things to figure out here. Let me walk you through the game plan. First up, the coolant temperature heat creep. We definitely need a bigger radiator. Now I noticed that Roman B on Facebook, thank you again for posting this. Your build progress in our Facebook group. By the way, if anybody's curious, we got a Facebook group. There ain't no BS in there. We're we're all helping each other and that's 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 how it's gonna stay. There ain't no trolling, there ain't no BS. We're helping each other. That's the type of community I like there. But Roman B has a slightly larger radiator than mine and he's having no heat creep issues with a twin turbo F body application. So I'm gonna grab one just like his. Maybe not right now, but I'm definitely gonna get one. So big thanks to Roman for sharing the one he's using. That's gonna be step one. All right, number two, controlling intake air temps, IAT. So we saw 140, which believe it or not is high, but it's not high until you're at like 160. 160 and above, you're, you're high on the IAT temps for something like what we're wanting to do. 140, that's really where you don't wanna go past. That's like kinda like the wall. So is it high? Yes. Is it that high? No, it's not that high. It isn't, it isn't. If you keep creeping past that though, that's where detonation starts to happen and we all know what detonation does to engines, or well turbocharged engines pushing a lot of boost and timing and whatnot. So this one might actually be an easy fix. I might be able to use a heat shield or something to block that hot airflow off the radiator or move the radiator. There's a lot of options I have. I could try to build a cold air intake box. I just need to make sure airflow is getting into it. Next, we have the possible failure of a fuel pump. So, um, you know, I've been hitting these Modellas and I just can't sit still sometimes. So uh, we might have already went out there and verified that both fuel pumps are functioning. All right, I was gonna wait till tomorrow, but start getting into these modellers. Now I can't contain myself. I gotta know. Is one of these fuel pumps not firing? I need extra hands and I need lights. Let there be light. Hell yeah. Okay, no vice grips. But we do have a break. Good night. Oh, Okay. 
Okay, that's not gonna work. All right, but we do have... Oh, that thing smells like shit. What the f Ugh. What the f does that smell like shit for? God, it stinks. What the f We have a wheel crew. Then now it stinks. Watch the trim. Oh my god, my fingers sting. I can't do it. I can't do it. God almighty. Right, I'm gonna need y'all up here. Well, this is kind of a bummer to find out, but if I pull on this one, that one definitely works, right? If I get my hand up in there, <laughs> that one definitely works too. They is both are working. Which is kind of a bummer because that would have been a real easy fix. Now, those are Hellcat 525 pumps, by the way. They're not 450 Wombros. Those are Hellcat pumps, so I don't know. And finally, number four. So in this data log, as you can see here, you see all this RPM chatter uh, and the way the boost was fluctuating. We were running 20 pound passes until we accidentally smashed into our 34.5 PSI boost limit. And then after that, that 20 pounds turned into like 17 fluctuating. So I'm wondering if any of that boost is creeping out the head. So we're going to do a compression check, see how the cylinders are doing, see if we need to pull the heads, see if we need to slide a new head gasket on there um you know if it didn't damage anything which it may not have 140 is not terrible terrible on the iats it's pretty hot and we're running e85 the how lean we got it's the only thing that really scared me but um we might be all right we might be all right honestly the oil's not milked, so we need to investigate that and just see if we lifted the head. Oh, and I uh, need to correct something I said in the past when I showed y'all how, how to mark the dipstick tube for a uh, transmission oil level. You need to actually go a quarter inch above that line that I made. So the flush pan line, you need to go a quarter inch above that, which is probably two to three quarts higher. Now, luckily for me, I overfill everything I'd fill. So I was a quarter inch above that. And I'll show you guys tomorrow. Not going to do no fancy camera work. I'll show you all that tomorrow. We'll check the level and I guarantee it's quarter inch above where it's supposed to be, if not half inch. I don't know if y'all can see that tent, but she is way past the line. All right, guys, um, I'm going to finish these here Modellos, watch some TV and I'll see y'all in the morning. Ooh, that was on there pretty soft. All right, well, we're off to a great start. The spark plug was literally loose as hell. Some of these plug wires were pretty loose on there as well. So uh, yeah, that might've been that RPM issue. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't see much of a mark there. Okay, let's get the compression tester out and check out uh, cylinder number one. All right, cylinder one, just under 150. Spark plug number three, cylinder three, also was in there really loose. Well, I did hold it a little bit longer, but looks like 165. <laughs> 160. All right, so cylinder seven, eight and four seem a little low. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it cool off outside a little bit, come back and retest those to see if maybe I just didn't get them down in there enough. All right, after retesting, we got 150, 155 and 149. So they're all about around 150 to 165, which is, you know, lower than a stock application, but my rings are pretty well gapped. So they're either all five or 10 low, except for the 160 and 65s, or that's just how I gap the ranks. 
which is what I'm leaning towards right now. All right, so the erratic RPM fluctuation, we're 100% blaming on how this entire bank, all the spark plugs were loose. Right now, compression seems all right. It's not, not bad, nothing's hurt. Phase two, 30 bucks at the Harbor Freight. You know, we'll see uh, if there's any fuel. There's no water in any of the radiator or hoses or anything. So I'll fill it with some hose water and uh, you know, got some fresh BR7EFs. You know, the good old copper NGKs. We'll get those gapinated and throwing on in there and then we'll let it idle. Then we'll throw that tester on there and we're gonna find out if we're pulling these heads or not. All eight plugs are changed and tightened this time <laughs> on both sides. Plug wires are back on. Gonna fill this with hose water, crank it up, let it run, and then do the head gasket block test. giveaway there. Alright, got a little more light out here. Got us a bin I just cleaned out. Now we're gonna get crack lacking. Gonna take off the intake, gonna take off the heads and uh, further inspect. see much going on here oh what do you know another gasket that isn't blown out fun well all right gonna suck the water out and, uh, you know any debris hit it with the WD cover it up for the night got my WD piss out of her. Florida's got a lot of humidity, so, uh, you know, we ain't, we ain't scared to put a little excess of WD up in there. See right there, something went down, right, or maybe that was when I was pulling it off. This head had a lot, a lot better seal going on. I don't think this head actually leaked, but the other head, I'll show you on the actual head itself, definitely had like two spots where it at least so oh. this was gucci didn't have to pull it but we did anywho goodness gracious that was fun i gotta clean up my mess out here all right y'all my back hurts i'll see y'all All right, so this is the head I said was good. And what we're looking for is stuff like that right there. See where the, the pitting is, how close it is to the edge. Yeah. So that might have actually still been sealed there. This one was what I said was good, probably didn't have to pull, but the passenger head, the head that all spark plugs were actually tight on, you know, this one definitely had more combustion power going on. As you can see, right through there, it definitely had gases escaping. All the way through. 
I think there was another spot too, right there. Looks like that's just the worst of it right there. That's all it takes. Big blow out there. Little blow out there. Well, I don't know if we're gonna send these back to a machine shop or not yet. They were originally sent to a machine shop. I'll probably just hit them with a real fine sandpaper. You know, a flat block or something. Gonna clean up the block similar way and uh, reseal it and call it a day. Oh, <laughs>